Erin, thank you so much for the work that you're doing on Dr. Me First. Super congrats on your 200th episode. Congratulations. I am so proud of you. I can't believe 200 episodes of your podcast. That is amazing, girl. Congratulations and happy listening. Shout out to Dr. Erin Wiseman for 200 amazing episodes of the Dr. Me First podcast. Congratulations, Erin, on 200 amazing episodes. Huge congratulations on your 200th episode. And I want to congratulate you on your 200th episode. Girl, you are such an inspiration. Congratulations on reaching your 200th episode. Hey, welcome to episode 200. Hot diggity. We made it. You know, when I first started podcasting, I was going to be happy if I got to 100. Well, you, you've done very well, in my opinion, honey, that with the exception that you have one one repeat guest over and over that I always kind of question why why you bring that guy back on. <laughs> uh, I think it's fun. People like these married to an alpha female episodes. They seem to. I, I've seen reviews. They seem to as well. I'm, I'm always surprised. Well, we're going to live up this episode. I did especially set this episode aside so that Craig could come with me. I'm your colleague in medicine and coach in life, Dr. Freaking Aaron Wiseman. And we're going to talk all things 200th episode. We're going to talk about past guests. We're going to do our segment down on the farm. And I finally figured out what my segment is for married to an alpha female. It is married to your alpha female tips. So if you haven't gotten your spouse or partner yet to listen to this, you might want to get them out for this one because I finally figured out what my segment is. That's always key. Always key. Have some tips. All right. So we're going to jump into it. And in the next segment, we're going to do thank yous to all our past sponsors, guests, the Patreon group, and of course, you, our loyal listeners. Okay, here we go. Right. Well, first and foremost, Craig was just telling me I definitely do need to email the gal who does my bump music because it is bomb ass amazing. Even though that one person on Apple iTunes who said it was annoying, I'm just going to ignore them. <laughs> There's always a hater in the crowd. Always a hater. I guess you don't make it till you have a hater, right? Well, that's, that's just part of life, I say. <laughs> Oh, well. Well, first of all, what I want to do is I want to thank the people who over these 200 episodes have decided that my message and Dr. Me First really resonates with them and they wanted to support us. So over the course of time, we have had six different sponsors and I am going to list them off and thank them so much. So thank you so much to Dr. Karina Hopin, to Dr. Laurel Fick and the St. Vincent's Transitional Residency Program. Thank you to Physician Life Coaching and Dr. Devin and Gumbel. Thanks so much to Melissa McClung and Life by Design Careers. One that you got to jump on was Smart Docs yes. with the Jeffress family and our most recent one, Pattern Life, who specializes in physician-only disability insurance. So thank you so much, guys, for supporting the podcast, wanting to be a little bit extra involved and help paying for our bills a little bit. Well, yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> Glad to have people like that that'll help you out, you know. Exactly, exactly. And I do have to brag a little bit. Last month, we almost hit 6,000 downloads for the whole month. That is wonderful. It was awesome. And then actually in July here, we hit a new one-day download total. Do you want to guess how many we had? Uh, um, No. You're not even going to guess? (laughs) I'm not going to be near it, so why? We had over 1,200 downloads on a one-day drop. That's awesome. Yeah. So I know you guys are listening, and I just so appreciate you. And next, what I want to do is just appreciate and just like ooze thanks all over my special guests, because there's no way I could have done 200 episodes by myself. 
Well, I, I think, you know, just having having those people out there willing to come on and take their own time. I think that's just wonderful that you can find people willing to help out like that and to do those things. Well, you know, and the amazing thing is so many of these guests I didn't know prior to them yeah. signing up yeah. have become great colleagues and even some I mean, just great friendships that I would have never had if I hadn't had them on. Well, and resources, too. I know that as you've talked to other people, you've been able to, hey, you need to talk to this or that person. And absolutely they kind of specialize or they're over here in this area and they'd be able to help. Totally made just a huge network. The Dr. Me First Network, which has actually transformed into the Physician Coaching Alliance. Yes. And that's kind of where, you know, as, I, as I've talked to so many different physician coaches, I was like, hey, we need to like stop lone wolfing it and instead like make a wolf pack together. And that's exactly how Physician Coaching Alliance has come about. And I do. I feel so much more interconnected in a really, really great space instead of feeling isolated. Yeah, it's a nice community for you to be a part of. I know that uh, you have several meetings with with uh, the other members of the alliance and and I know that you always come out smiling after you've had your your meetings and you always act like you enjoy it. Yeah, it's really uplifting. And so throughout this episode, we are going to cut in. I have asked some of those past guests to just drop some shout outs and some encouragement. So you will hear them scattered through there. And one person asked me what my favorite episode was. And I was like, Ugh, that's like picking your favorite kid. You just can't yeah. do it. No, not publicly. Anyhow. <laughs> never, never publicly. I no. don't even think I think I'm ballsy enough that I could do it publicly, but I just won't. I, I mean, as I was looking through the list last night, getting ready for this podcast and scrolling through and, and being like, what was my favorite podcast? Every single episode that I went past, I remember having the conversation. I remember working on the podcast. I remember just some of the great pearls and nuggets out of every single one of them. So I really, I don't think I could pick one right now. Well, it's, and it's not easy to pick, you know, whenever, especially as the numbers mount up and the more you've had, you know, I mean, maybe after your first episode, it was pretty easy to pick your favorite. Yeah. The ones that I didn't do, (laughs) but (laughs) it's gotten better. Yeah. It's gotten a lot better. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break for a minute and here are a few of our past Dr. Me First fabulous guests. Dr. Me First. What an awesome name and what an awesome celebration that this is the 200th episode. Erin, you are so amazing. And all of you listeners, what a treat to be part of this tribe. I'm Alexandra Stockwell. I'm a physician turned relationship and intimacy expert. And Erin reached out to me on LinkedIn, and one thing led to another, and we recorded an episode entitled Intimacy. And Erin, I just thought it was so, so impressive that when I suggested that name, you're just like, yes. And that yes is your hallmark gesture, the way you walk through the world. I love how you are this blend of a proper medical professional and an authority figure and this super relatable, warm, wonderful woman. And the fact that you bring both of those energies to the audience, to women physicians who are so good at doctoring others and somewhere along the journey from starting to realize that we need to doctor ourselves to giving ourselves permission to do it, to actually doing it. And one of the things you definitely show us is that in order to doctor me first, you have to think outside the box, be creative, be warm hearted. And that's what this podcast is all about. So thank you for the invitation to participate in this really special celebratory episode. And my invitation to everyone who's listening, Erin is showing us how to celebrate our accomplishments by making this a party episode. 
And I invite you to take that principle and pick something, something small, something big, and go ahead and celebrate it because we all do amazing kick-ass things and we could do with a little more celebration. Hi, this is Kara Pepper. I'm a practicing primary care internist in Atlanta, Georgia, and a physician life coach. Erin and I met on Instagram uh, a year or two ago and then became physician coaching buddies and then got to meet in real life. And I am here to tell you that Erin is exactly the same person in real life that she is um, when you listen to her podcast. She is funny. She is irreverent. She is real. And she loves her family and her friends. And I think all of that love just comes pouring out into her podcast every time you listen to her. You can hear it in her voice. You can hear her smiling. And her life's work really is to help physicians really find joy again. And so uh, as a colleague and as a friend, uh, she helps me find my joy all the time. And I'm just eternally grateful for the work that you're doing, um, not only in your close circles, but in our physician community. So congratulations, Erin, on 200 amazing episodes. Keep up the good work. You are making a huge difference every day. We love you. Thank you so much, guys. And we're back. Are you ready to do your down on the farm segment? Yes. But before I do that, I want to I want to mention to everybody, there's nothing like whenever you're doing this and your wife looks at you and she's like, hey, square up to the mic, square up to the mic, because <laughs> it, it just brings back so many basketball coaching memories. You know, it's like, hey, you got to squ- square it up to your defender. You know, well, it's life lessons. No, where's the ball keep doing it. Get your mouth close to the mic, man. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, tell us what's happening down on the farm. All right. Well, uh, this week, and I had a uh, one or two of the children come with me. We uh, we went over to Klein's Flying Service over and uh, across the uh, Indiana state line. So I always tell the kids I'm taking them out of state because it's literally a quarter mile across the state line into Illinois, and uh, they they have a custom application service where they they own airplanes and have several uh, friends who own airplanes that'll work for them. And they uh, custom apply fungicide, insecticide on crops. for all the moms out there, dusty crop hopper. Yes, yes. Kind of a dusty crop hopper story. And they they do this for for a living and uh, they're really good at it. Very nice people. And then uh, we got some more fungicide, insecticide in that we'll put in over the beans by ourselves. Our sprayer is not tall enough to go over our corn. But uh, we can get an airplane to do that, and then we can. The beans are shorter, and we can we can spray the beans ourselves. So we're we're getting in the realm, the mode where we're doing that. Just crop protection, trying to keep insects down, trying to keep disease out of the out of the crop, so uh, we can get maximize yield. And I think it's really fun. I love going out and watching them when they start flying. Yes, it is. It it's is so neat. cool. It really. You is. always think those guys may be on the verge of being just a little bit crazy. Well. And I, I really always do think of the movie Planes when they're doing it because they do do some really cool, crazy stuff when you think they're going to like run into a phone line or a yeah. set of trees. A grain bin. Grain bin. Yeah, that that makes you nervous there on the farm yourself. You know, you think, man, that's... So if you're not in close. an agricultural community, but you want to get some, see some crop dusting, go watch Planes or come visit us here at Wiseman Farms. Well, and the, the neat thing the kids always love when we go over to Klein Flying Service is that uh, they're always landing planes and taking them off there because they, the plane, you know, a helicopter can stop at any location. The plane has to go back home to the home base and, and, fill, and up. fill back up there. And so there's always a plane coming in, landing and taking off. And uh, literally the way they have it there at their place, you have to drive across their runway to get to the main building. So you look both ways for a plane before you get to the building to drop off chemicals or tell them what fields you want sprayed. Mm -hmm. And so that's always kind of neat. Well, talk a little bit about how they locate the fields too, because it's not like you can tell them this road, that road. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's all done by, uh, you know, maps, you know, kind of like a Google earth program 
where they've, you know, you can find the county roads and you can find the fields at, aerially. And, and then we give them a prescription. Basically, we want to put this fungicide, so many ounces to the acre, this insecticide, so many ounces to the acre. And they record all that. Uh, they record all that on the computer program and then they print off those sheets and then they, they give those to the pilot and then they give those to the guy who's mixing their, uh, mixing up their, um, chemical, their batch for them. And so it's really neat that, uh, you know, there's, there's a pretty fair amount of technology in all of this. I mean, it's not just something that magically happens. I mean, there's a lot of technology in well, it. And a lot of coordination as well too. Oh yes. Oh, oh Yes. Awesome. Anything else happening down on the farm that we need to know about? Oh, nothing real, real major. I mean, those are the big, big things here for this, this last week or 10 We're still days. doing rain dances, praying for rain. Yep. yep. Hoping that we get another, another band of showers come through tonight if we're lucky. Just awesome. have to see. Well, I know that I've gotten a few emails and a few DMs from people who they do like your down on the farm segment. A hot diggity. Yeah. <laughs> the, I think it's just the learner in all of us that, you know, just to hear and learn something new in a different industry. And I know some people have reminisced about growing up on the farm and now they yes. no longer live yeah. on the farm. So I think your segment kind of brings up those memories. And then there's people who have no experience with agriculture. And I have some friends on Twitter who, who, um, who from the education field who uh, who've told me before that you know they grew up on a farm and and their dad still maybe does it but they 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 always like seeing some of my pictures on the farm on Twitter because it reminds them of things that they did growing up and and being out in the field and doing certain things with their family. Oh man, we haven't even talked about Twitter. You you're like a Twitter monster. Well, I don't like know about you- that. You are, you got the Twitter thing handled. So I just recently jumped into Twitter after my team, my, my business team has like, Hey, you need to like get on this platform. And I've been like pushing back against it. But anyway, Julie, my content creator, she was like, your husband's kind of a bomb on Twitter. He's got quite a good following. So what's your Twitter handle in case people want to follow you? Well, my Twitter handle is at High Banks Farmer. Uh, High Banks was a one time town in the, Oh gosh, probably in the 1800s, I guess. And uh, essentially, my family now owns what would have been most of the town, and it's just a field. You'd never know there was a town there. There's one guy that lives there with a house on the river. Um, it's it's along the white East Fork, the White River, and it's uh, there was a community there called High Banks, and it's because it's on the high yeah, side of the river. We have the high, the high bank, bank. The the other side of the river is the low bank, and, we and have it the was high bank. where there was a ferry crossing. Yes, there was across a across the river yeah. in the eighteen hundreds. And actually, it's pretty cool if you look at the plot map. Um, how you guys are taxed on it? It's still in the allotments. Oh my goodness, yes, there's... which makes a mess. But oh yeah. Uh, there's several fields that are still in the old town allotments, like yeah. the little the yeah. blocks and everything. Yeah, the field still comes. I mean, I think they get 25 or 30 individual tax parcels on on this one field, just because there's all these little Clumps. half acre quarter acre lots in the field. Well, and occasionally you guys get um, historical people that come down and do the. Metal detecting. Yeah, some guys will come down and want to do metal detecting, and they usually just find things like a fork or a spoon or things or like that. Or junk off you guys' as tractors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A washer or bolts off something that fell off tractor at some point. Yeah, go, so go find go find him on Twitter and hang out with him. I'm Truth RXS Truth Prescriptions at Twitter, and I can't say that I'm super active, but I'm trying. So I don't know. I feel like Twitter is a different world than where I hang out mostly, which is Instagram. Yeah. Oh, it definitely It's got is, a different feel to yeah. it, for sure. Yeah, it definitely does. Well, and another place that I'm hanging out more and more is Patreon. So I opened up a Patreon group at the beginning of this year just to see if there were people interested who would want to get more episodes or talk more one-on-one -on -one with me. And I just have to say that I think my Patreon group is just absolutely amazing. So... Uh, I brought on board Kayla Wells. She is my bomb ass podcast editor, producer, creator of magic. And she is going to be dropping all these backlog of extra episodes that I've had. I've been sitting on for like a year. Yeah. 
And so the Patreon group is actually getting more active. It's going to have extra content in it, actually dropping with this episode. And the great thing, too, is that I want to encourage anybody who wants maybe a little bit extra Dr. Me First in their life to come and join me on Patreon. So you can do the $10 a month um, sign up, which gets you in. And like I said, all those episodes and you're a supporter now of Dr. Me First. Or if you're interested in helping a resident or medical student also get these resources, you can bump up to the $20. And what that helps me do is actually I gift one medical student and one resident entry into the Patreon group and you're helping support them and support me on the podcast. So it's a cool place to hang out. And actually right now, if you jump into the Patreon community, I am giving away one entry into my new course. Sweet. I know. I'm super excited. One, to be like giving cool, amazing things away. Yeah, yeah. And two, to say, I have a course that's called Burnt Out to Badass. When I was filling out my CME application for the American Medical or for the American Academy of Family uh, Physicians, I was like, oh, they're not going to approve this. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, if they do, this is going to be the most worthwhile CME that physicians can absolutely do. So it is a 13 module course. Uh, the CME credentialing is still pending. I haven't heard back from the AAFP yet, but fingers crossed, we'll get it. You'll have CME hours that go along with it. And it's pretty much my guide to get you started from moving from that place of burnout and just total despair and brokenness to stepping back into your badassery. Because I truly believe that it's all within us. It just gets squished and shoved aside and locked in a closet for a while. But this is my spin on what I did what I do when I work with my clients and the things that I've seen to make people most successful. You know, and I, as a former teacher, I can honestly say that I see burnout, you know, in so many realms too, not just in what you talk about medically, but also I've seen it so much in the education field. And I really can relate with what you're saying on that because a lot of people do get told, Hey, just shut your mouth and get this done, Mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 it really is demoralizing and it's really tough on people and it's nice to, I really do appreciate the work that you do, honey. I think you really do try to help well, people. Thanks. Well, you know, at the end of my life, I've really thought about it and you know this cause I've told you, but what I want you to say and the kids to say, cause you've already told me that I'm going to die before you, but oh yeah. oh yeah, I'll make it longer. I know. <laughs> I really want the, want everyone around standing to be like, wow, she really lived. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I wouldn't mind if you put badass on my tombstone. tombstone. Yes. Yes. I would be okay with that. I didn't really want a tombstone, to be honest. I don't really want one either, but I would take a small uh, memorial. That says badass on it. Yeah. Yeah. One badass mother. One badass. (laughs) Maybe a bench, like, in the middle of the forest that people have to hike in and they'll be like, where did this come from? Yeah. I would like that too. But anyway, that's where this course, the name came from is I really wanted something to empower people to be not just be like, be better or transition your job. No, I want you to be a total fucking badass. And so, yeah, I'm super excited about it. It opens up August 3rd. So if you want to sign up ahead of time so that you get the notification exactly when it opens and you can. The really, really awesome thing with it is I wanted it to be a standalone in case you're busy, life is happening, that sort of thing. But I also wanted to have a group component with it. So if you want to upgrade, you can actually join a 13 week group that we're going to be doing every Sunday afternoons because, you know, I love coaching on yes, Sunday Sundays afternoons. Is when you do it. That's my bomb. That's like my golden time. I hang out with the kids in the morning. We have a great lunch and then I come down here and then I just coach my ass off the rest of the day. And I love it. I really, really do. And so part of that now will be the group course meeting every Sunday, going through these modules together, talking about what's happening, working through those biggest struggles, hearing other people's stories, too, and knowing you're not alone and all transforming through it together. Yes. So really, really excited about that. So check the show notes if you want to get on that. I just, I don't even care if one person signs up. It's going to be so fun. And you've got to see the swag. That's going to go out with this. <laughs> oh, the four-year-old. As soon as you got those mugs, 
As soon as you got those mugs, she wanted a picture with one of them. Oh, yes, she did. No clue what it says on the mug, thank goodness. No, she didn't have any idea. But yeah, if you haven't seen the swag that's going along with this course. So I got really excited. Um, I ordered custom-made mugs that say badass on them. Yeah. And so everybody will be getting that. Uh, You'll get a copy of my new book. You will also get a t-shirt that says the badass woman in me honors the badass woman. I mean, it's all sorts of badass. Oh, yeah. The book, the box is going to say badass on it. There's going to be just so much, oh, so much good swag that comes along. And that goes for anybody who joins the group class. They will be getting a box of badass swag. What if you have a male doctor? He doesn't want a shirt that says the badass woman. Well, I'll get it changed. They're custom just made the t-shirts. badass in me. I'll just say the badass in yeah. me honors the badass I, in you. I like that. But I like Maybe that. I'll just change all the t-shirts to say that. I'd like one. Would you? Would well, you? yeah, if it just said that, I mean, I want the badass woman in me. You, know. <laughs> you I mean, can I'm not embrace your feminine side. I can embrace it, you know, but I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to show it necessarily to the world, I don't think. I kind of would like you to wear the one that says the badass woman in me because then people could ask you about it and you can be like, yeah, well, that's, that's my alpha yeah. female. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Because, I mean, like the the alpha female pup, I mean, she immediately went for the mug. And, I mean, she didn't know what it said. But, I mean, it's just instincts is what I thought. You know, she just went for she it. She knew. She knew. Instinctively, she knew. But if you haven't seen the great mug, it's on my Instagram feed. Um, the T-shirt is the – actually, I've had these – I wear these T-shirts because my neighbor custom yeah. makes these T-shirts. So, I'm going to support her business and order, like, a whole shit ton of them. Um, but, yeah, I have one in yellow and I have one in gray. I think I'm going to go with a dark color this time for this this round of ordering. But, yeah, check out my Instagram feed so you can see if you want that as well. And it just comes as a perk. It's just my thank you for – joining the course, the group class, and to hopefully encourage you as you're, you're going through all of this. Hey there, Dr. Me First listeners. I'm Dr. Heather Hammerstadt. I'm an emergency doc, a lifestyle medicine doc, a weight and mindset coach, a mama, a podcaster, and a huge Aaron Weissman fan, like I know the rest of you are. I had so much fun bantering with her about global health, nonprofit leadership, and the bureaucracy and BS of medicine in episode two, Layers. And again, humbly coming back for the second time about entrepreneurship in and out of medicine and how non-traditional practices interluding with conventional medicine may save healthcare in episode 62, Wholeness. So I wanted to sneak on here and show my appreciation by surprising Erin to thank her for her voice, not just for education for her listeners, but for showing authenticity in her own story letting all of us know it's okay to be real about what we go through in and around medicine and for lifting up so many female physicians along the way. I love you, Erin. And also, I wanted to let you listeners know a few things. Number one, there is always a way to serve your community or your patients and still serve and save yourself. Number two, you cannot negotiate your dreams or wait them out. If you want your dreams, you need to execute. Three, you have no idea what the power of filling your own cup first, valuing your body and your thoughts can do for the filling of others' cups next. And four, don't ever forget that you have the power to control four things, regardless of what's going on around you that may be out of your control. How you fuel your body, how you move your body, how your thoughts control your feelings and results, and the being of your inner state. Now, ladies, you go be you and change this world. Hey, this is Dish Espath from The Frugal Physician. Erin, thank you so much for the work that you're doing on Dr. Me First. It's so necessary during these difficult times. Hang in there, everyone, and stay frugal, y'all. Hey, Dr. Erin, to my fellow KCUMB alum, This is Dr. Denise Wunderler, sports medicine physician from Jersey of Team Vienna for SUDC Awareness in memory of my daughter, Vienna, 
and the SUDC Coalition and USA Volleyball. Sending you super congrats on your 200th episode. Thank you so much for having me on your amazing podcast and doing an incredible job inspiring others. I greatly look forward to your next 200 episodes. Welcome back, everyone. And now we are to the, uh, the the segment, the section of our program where where my better half will give the married to an alpha tip. I told him he couldn't do it either. That I yeah. had to do it. Yeah, I don't get to give the tips. I just <laughs> I just get to listen to the tips. Well, you can chime in it, but okay. So our married to your alpha tip for today is: just because we are struggling, it doesn't mean we need rescuing. Yes, that's right. And I think this is an important tip for anyone who is married to an alpha female is we don't evidently want you to fix things. No, no. The other day we had a nice long talk and I said, well, what can I do? And you said, you're supposed to listen here. Yes. And at least I've gotten better about like telling you what I need. Yeah. Yeah. But absolutely. I thought this was a really strong tip for being married to an alpha female because it doesn't denote that you have to be the warrior, the fixer, the corrector of all things. Instead, you just have to be a partner in it. And so what I would suggest with your alpha female is just give safe space to process. If that is giving her some distance, if that's three or four days would be recommended on my side. Yes. If that's, Encouraging her to talk to friends or get out of the house or journal, read, cook, give her that like time and space to process through things, knowing, letting her know, though, you are available. Yeah. Yeah. So having that safe space to process. And then the other thing is, too, that is so important when any of us are struggling is to know that we have choices and that we have choice in the matter. Well, and I mean, just like any couple, I think that you make the decisions together or it works best. In my opinion, you make decisions together versus one person makes every decision. And so, I mean, you just have to talk through things and, hey, well, what about this? And what do you think about that? And bounce well, it back and forth off each other. I think so. I mean, I think sometimes, too, the decision that we come to is like, OK, you decide on this and whatever you decide we're going to yeah. go with. Yeah. I mean, that happens a lot with me where you're like, well, just hand, you know, so. But what I was thinking as far as with choices is not downplaying anything that she may be throwing out there, but letting all options come on the table. Like I like to say with my clients, having some word vomit, just like getting it all out from absolutely not possible to most reasonable and everything in between. Mm -hmm. Because those are in the moments when you say, well, what else or what if or how about that? I think that's when you get out of that like binary thinking of either it has to be this way or everything's going to crap. Yeah. Well, and there's, you know, there's so much ground in the middle that people don't realize is there that you just got to keep so looking much. and finding and hunting and digging. You know, and that's where I think I come in with the magic of coaching is so many times people think they have like two, maybe three options at best. But here's what they forgot to tell us in medical school. There are no right answers. There is yeah. like a million ways to skin a cat. There's a million ways to skin a human cadaver. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, honey. I know that oh. just made you turn your stomach a little yeah. bit. But it's so true. It's so true. There is more than one or two right ways to live your life. And who's to say like, and this has been really hard for my journey. Who's to say you try something, you get down the path and you're like, oh, yeah, this is not working. You turn. Oh, and that's a big part of life, you know. I mean, just... I don't know. It's like when you're a college kid and you change your major and people are like, oh, well, okay, well, what are you going to do now with I your life? I think you need to realize, you know? though, probably 50% of us would not have allowed ourselves to change the major. Oh, I'd say you're right. <laughs> I'd say you're right. But I mean, you see people who do that. And I mean, 
Uh, well, it's just like when I was in medical school, there was a couple people in my med school class. Um, one in particular I can think of, she started the DO MBA program and she decided the more that she got into it, like she didn't like the medicine side. She really loved the MBA side mm-hmm. and she ended up quitting in our second year. And at the time I was thinking like, holy fuck, like what is she thinking? But now looking back on it, I'm so proud of her. I am so proud of her that she made a decision not to go any further in debt, yeah. but to be like, this is what I like. And, and be okay with it. Well, I mean, you could have just kept running up the bill, so as to speak, as far as how much it was going to cost you. Well, and just like white knuckling and holding to, I'm going to be a doctor. This is exactly how it is. Yeah. I, I reminisce a lot about on my path. Like if I knew what I knew now, would I change? I still don't know the answer to that, which is okay. But I also now respect that other people did have those answers for themselves before yeah. I did. Yeah. Well, and everybody's different, you know, everybody, everybody has different things that drive them and different th- thought processes. And so, so there makes, you go. There's you know, your sense. married to your alpha tip. Just because we are struggling doesn't need me. We need rescuing. Here is the flip side to the alphas. Ask for help when you need it. Don't wait till you're totally drowning and be vulnerable to those who have earned it. So what I mean by that is so many times as an alpha, I feel like I've got to do it all. Keeper of all things, doer of all doings. When in reality, life goes so much better when you delegate, when you hire help, when you ask for help, when you allow people to help you. And then also the being vulnerable for those who earned it. You don't have to tell all your secrets to everyone, but I think you need in your life a few select people who you can sit and be totally vulnerable with and say, this is where my wounds are. This is where I'm hurting. Can you help me? I think that's very important. Yeah. So there you go. New segment. I liked it. I liked it. Liked it a lot. All right, folks. My last thank you is to you, all the loyal listeners. There is no other reason besides us coming down to the basement and having a few laughs why do this podcast but for you? So I hope in some way it has helped influence your life. I hope that it really has shown you that your life, your calling, your pulse truly does matter. And I hope that you walk away realizing that you do get to doctor yourself first so that then you can go into the world and you can do your best work. So if there's any way that I can help you more, um, you know, I've laid out a few options with the Patreon group, getting in the course, one-on-one coaching, even just hanging out with us on social media. I really encourage you to do that. We're real people. We have real problems. Yep. We're figuring it out too. We're just a couple steps ahead. And I just want you to know that we truly, truly love all of you. And we could not be more thankful to be on episode 200. Yes. It's been wonderful to do this with you, sweetheart. And that, uh, I'm even more thrilled that people listen. I know. Well, thank you guys. And like I always shut this up with, please remember your life, your calling, your pulse matters. Hi, Aaron. This is your coaching comrade, Terry Malcolm. Congratulations on your 200th episode. With your talented touch and spicy can-do attitude, you pump up the airwaves with an irresistible energy that reminds us we are independent and powerful physician leaders just like you. Feel all of the feels of your impressive accomplishment. I've got a feeling this is only the beginning of even more badass things to come in your future. Congratulations, my friend. I celebrate you and can't wait to see what you achieve next. Yo, Dr. Aaron, it's me, Stress Free Mom MD and Next Level Physician, Dr. Maisha. And I want to congratulate you on your 200th episode. Girl, you are such an inspiration. And I just appreciate all that you're doing for the physician community between Dr. Me First and uh, Physician Coach Alliance. And I, I appreciate having been on your podcast. You're one of the people who made me know that I could start my own podcast my own way. So thank you for being an inspiration for me and for all that you're doing with our physician community. I am honored and proud to be uh, able to work alongside you as a fellow 
physician, coach, warrior, sister dot. So keep doing you and to all the listeners out there, keep living your best life. Aaron, I love your swag. I love your spirit. And I look forward to continuing to listen to Dr. Me First. Peace out. Namaste. Hi, Aaron. This is Erica Howe from the Women Physicians Wellness Conference in Grand Cayman. I am so proud of you. I can't believe 200 episodes of your podcast. That is amazing, girl. Ah, you are such a badass, but you already know that. (laughs) You know, I wanted to do a quick shout out to you, but also to your listeners. I know we are going through all this COVID craziness, and I wanted to give one word of encouragement. I want every listener to reach out to somebody new today that they don't know so well, and reach out and tell them how you're struggling or a challenge that you're having right now. I think there is so much value in us connecting with each other and in trying to make new connections and get to know more people. We live so much in a silo when it comes to our clinical work and our clinical lives, and many times we don't brand branch out and reach out to new people. So I encourage everyone who's really struggling a little bit today to reach out to somebody new and let them know what you're going through. And I bet you're going to see the same thing come back to you that someone else is going to be vulnerable and honest with you and say, gosh, I'm struggling with that too, or here's my challenge. And that's a way that we really connect with each other. And the more connections that we build with each other, the more uh, that we have strength and that we can lean on each other in those hard times. So I hope that really helps uh, both you and your listeners. And I'm so proud of you, Erin. Way to go. Hey, everyone. This is Dr. Vias of Sleepless and NOLA. I am a sleep coach teaching parents how to get their kids sleeping through the night in a gentle and safe manner. I am here to give a shout out to Dr. Erin Wiseman. If you are listening for your very first time, know that you're in for a tremendous treat hearing a podcast that is going to be full of excitement and important stories that will push you along your journey. And if you are here for your 200th time, you know how charismatic, fun, and exciting Dr. Wiseman is. And uh, she is a tremendous asset to the field of podcasting and coaching. And I am excited to have worked with her and looking forward to you guys propelling yourself on your journey from working with her. Congratulations and happy listening. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Happy 200th episode of your fantastic podcast. Erin, this is Tracy O'Connell. You have been such an inspiration. Y'all, she is not burned out to badass. She is still on fire. She is badass and no sign of burning out, only burning up and blowing up the coaching world. And I just feel so fortunate to know her and have had a chance to see her in action. And I'm so grateful, Erin, for all that you have done for all of us. You are truly badass. Congratulations. Hey, Erin, this is Nisha. What an amazing feat, finishing 200 podcasts. That is totally awesome. And not only did you finish those, it's like unbelievable work that you do, especially for the working moms, physicians in a professional career who have no time, actually, truthfully speaking, if they have to have a full-time family and a full-time job. Both, I would say, time management and mind management is something that is a skill that we get to develop. And you're an amazing voice for this community, and it is an awesome community. So once again, congratulations. I'm looking forward to hearing a lot more from you. Take care. Hi, Erin and all the listeners of the Dr. Me First podcast. This is Dr. Karen from balancedoctor.com. Erin, I wanted to say huge congratulations on your 200th episode. What an incredible achievement to do so many fantastic interviews with so many fantastic physicians. 
I enjoyed being a guest so much on your show. There's always so much great things to talk about with you and also so many great things to listen. So I hope you've got at least another 200 more podcasts to come our way, if not more. Well done, Erin. Really great job. Hi, I'm Dr. Stacia Dearman, the founder of Thrive, a place where physicians who are recovering after difficult patient outcomes or surviving malpractice litigation can come to find the support they need. And I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Aaron Weissman and to all of you, her listeners, on the exciting occasion of the 200th episode of her podcast. The truth is that there is so much that many of us would like to see be different about modern American medicine. But little by little, as we come together and work together, those changes are happening. They will come. One podcast episode, one speaking engagement, one blog post at a time. I want to congratulate you, Erin, on the success of your wonderful podcast. And I look forward to many adventures yet to come. Hi, I'm Dr. Sheetal Ajmani. I was a guest on the Dr. Me First podcast, episode 28, Self-Compassion, and episode 120, Favorite Self-Care. I met Dr. Wiseman at the end of 2018. We were in a lot of female physician Facebook groups together. And she was just getting her podcast started. She was requesting volunteers to be guests on her podcast. And I had never been on a podcast before. So I saw her posts about it. And every time I would see a post about it, I would think about it a little. But I was so nervous. So it took me a lot of courage, actually, to respond to one of her posts and volunteer to be a guest. So we recorded our podcast, I believe it was December of 2018. And like I said, I was so nervous. But let me tell you, right when we got on the Zoom call to record together, she made me feel so comfortable instantly. She is so easy to talk to. So for everyone listening, what you hear of Dr. Wiseman on her podcast is the real deal. She is just the same when you talk to her in real life. And I know this because we have since gone on to become really good friends. We even traveled to Sedona, Arizona together last December, where she joined me to help celebrate my birthday. So what I want to say and the kick of encouragement I want to give you today is that if there is something that you want to do, that you're feeling drawn to do and feeling called to do, but you feel nervous about it, my kick of encouragement to you is that you take that chance and it's such a great act of courage. You know, there's... um People say courage is not the absence of fear. You feel the fear and you do it anyways. So like I said, I was so nervous to get on this first podcast with Erin, but I did it. And you know what came out of it has been a really great friendship. So something that I wasn't even expecting to come out of being on that podcast So you never know what your decisions and actions are going to lead to. So if there's something that you're being called to do, um, go for it because you never know what the end result will be. And to my dear friend, Erin, congratulations. I can't believe this is your 200th episode. You have created something so wonderful here and you're helping so many people through this process. So congratulations to my dear friend. Once again, this is Dr. Sheetal Ajmani. Hi, I'm Dr. Jill Wiener, and I wanted to just give a shout out to Dr. Aaron Wiseman for 200 amazing episodes of the Dr. Me First podcast. For anyone who's listening, you are in for a huge treat. Way to go, Aaron. You're the best. Hello to Aaron and your wonderful audience. This is Dr. Tracy Samoa, physician coach and child and adolescent psychiatrist from Austin, Texas. 
Congratulations on reaching your 200th episode. That means you've had 200 opportunities to share with your audience insight and wisdom from you and your guests as you've explored ways for doctors to reach their best selves. And I was honored to have an opportunity to talk with you about firsts. That is talking about first steps that people can take to getting towards their best purpose-filled life. So if this is your first time listening to Dr. Me First, you are in for a treat as you explore Aaron's other 199 episodes. And if this is your 200th episode, then buckle your seatbelts because I'm sure there's more awesomeness to come. I'm looking forward to seeing what's next. Hi, this is Melissa McClung, job search strategist and executive coach. And I just want to encourage you with one of my favorite quotes by Zig Ziglar. What you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. Hope you have a great day. Hi, all. Kristen Yates here. I just wanted to remind you to listen to those goals that pop into your head, that feel terrifying, and you tell yourself there's no way you can do that goal or go for that goal. I want to remind you that that is exactly what you should be doing, and it's going to feel exciting, and it's going to feel scary, and it means that you're doing it right. Those goals that you have are in place because you're meant to do bigger things with your life. You're meant to help people. There are people out there who need you to listen to that goal so that they can improve their lives just as you can. Have a great day. Hi, this is Dr. Carol Jamura. I'm a board certified gynecologist and intuitive healer and a physician burnout prevention coach. I am also a burnout survivor. And I had the pleasure to be a guest of Dr. Erin on the Dr. Me First podcast. And I want to give her kudos for what she's doing to help others, especially female physicians. And uh, taking time out of a busy schedule and give and give and give to the community. Wishing her the best. Mm -hmm.